The year was 2012, and the video game industry was booming. We had sequels from Borderlands to Darkness to Darksiders to Prototype to... We had third entries in the series from Mass Effect 3, Diablo 3, and for crying out loud, Far Cry 3. We had Halo 4, Resident Evil 6. Hell, we even had original ideas of beautifully crafted video games for instance, Journey, and then we even had a first-person shooter that actually put the player with moral dilemmas and issues, Spec Ops The Line. We even had, audaciously, the games of the future, Candy Crush and Clash of Clans, and yes, I'm being a little bit facetious, but in 2012, we had an unthinkable combo between lollipops and chainsaws. Cue the montage. So here's the thing about Lollipop Chainsaw. It is a fever dream of a game. One that will have you question either your own sanity or that of the developers. You will have double takes pretty much on every scene just going to yourself, wait, what? Did, did that just seriously happen? It is nonsensical, it is absurd, it is flashy, stupid and fun all at the same time. Developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer, these are the guys that also brought us Killer is Dead and Shadow of the Damned, alongside many other titles. And from what I remember, they pretty much have the same brand of ridiculous humor, over-the-top action and game sequences. In Lollipop Chainsaw you play as Juliet Starling, a zombie hunting cheerleader. She is pretty much buffy in game format. She's a bit of an absent-minded character that manages to always stay positive and tackle any type of obstacle head-on with a smile on her face and a chainsaw in her hand, bless her little heart. Now, I'm gonna be frank with you here, is she an objectified or sexualized character? Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much, I, I just can't argue against that logic. What however ends up happening is that this objectification is done on purpose, the game itself becoming a deconstruction of the genre. I would even go as far as to argue that the way it is played out does not in fact take anything away from the main character's strength. Although her replies are those of a, well, of a blissful bimbo, she still manages to play on those same expectations. Furthermore, as I previously mentioned, she is almost irritatingly positive. And although you might argue that this serves just to make her more of an idiot, I would actually state the contrary. It is in her unyielding temperament and attitude where her strength truly resides. I mean, there's a freaking fucking zombie apocalypse going on and she still manages to stay positive. Also. In the prologue, your boyfriend gets bitten and you, as the zombie hunting, chainsaw wielding, occult knowing cheerleader that you are, you cut off his head and keep him or it alive through some voodoo juju or something, I don't know. And that way you save him. And also you attach his head to your hip carrying him around because he is still the love of your life, even though he is just a head. And even then, in that oddly specific scenario, you are still positive. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but we as gamers owe a great debt of gratitude to Lollipop Chainsaw. It is because of Juliet and Nick over here that we actually have Kratos and Mimir over here. It is obvious, blatantly obvious, that Kratos and Mimir are actually an homage to Juliet and Nick, right? The game was just ahead of its time. Back to the video. So game-wise, Lollipop Chainsaw is just your typical hack and slash. The campaign being between 5 to 8 hours long, depending on difficulty and how many of Juliet's costumes you want to unlock, you perv. There's a prologue and 6 chapters, every chapter has a gimmick boss, and it is certainly not much to write home about. But there is a catch. 
every stage is characterized by its own aesthetic and its own music. The bosses of this game, for who knows what godly reason, are connected to music types. So you end up having the spiky head punk vocalist, the viking epic metal drummer, the psychedelic sitar player, the IDM keyboard player and the heavy metal guitarist. With the worst and evilest of them all being the one who manipulates the events, the emo goth kid who got bullied too much and wants revenge. Yeah, this is truly a 2012 game indeed. The final boss being, of course, your run-of-the-mill, fat, tall as a building, Elvis-looking zombie. Just writing the script for this video had me questioning my own sanity and existence. Anyhow, each stage, placed slightly differently given the abilities that you unlock, has a bunch of QTEs, because, well, it was 2012 after all, and since it is not a long game, it does not overstay its welcome. It's about the mindless fun and about the what the fuck moments that you are given. Some jokes are meta, some didn't age very well and others just have you giggling because the game never takes itself too seriously. And that is something that in my book, if made with the gamer's enjoyment in mind, will be at the very least a good or enjoyable experience. Now, is it worth 40 or 50 dollars? Oh god no. There are very few games that I would actually justify that amount of money. But is it worth it if you find it in a thrift, thrift store for instance? Or if Steam has a mega 90% sale? Well, sure, why not? Give it a go. Anyway, that's enough from me. Don't forget to breathe, don't forget to smile, and of course, don't forget to double save just after your game has already autosaved. Because that's just what we do. Have a nice one, and see you in the next video.